um, tell us uh, more about the, the ba yeah the background of the of the band and uh, the the creation of uh, of this album. Since Andy joined the band is kind of where the band truly began. Before that, Kitty and I were experimenting with ideas, but we don't really feel that the band truly began until Andy joined and we started touring. So from the first album, it's been maybe like seven years with COVID in the middle of that. We've developed a lot over that time. As we've played more and more shows, we've started to realize that what we really want to put across to an audience is something emotional, exciting, and a joyously violent experience. Um, and that, all of that, informed what we wanted to do with this album sonically and then on top of that Kitty had an incredibly uh, difficult time with mental health and then on top of that her mother passed away which meant that lyrically the album took a turn specifically kind of towards that yeah. direction yeah and um, we started making the record in like the weeks and months following the kind of very um, unexpected death of my mum And um, I think that's why the album is so raw and visceral and um, quite uh, abrasive to listen to because it was such a difficult time and all that emotion was just like pouring out of me into the music and into the songs. Um, and it really informed what Bloodsuckers is about and how it sounds. Yeah. Totally. yeah, we realised that Andy and I is the kind of instrumentalist on the album and Kitty and I producing it together. If we wanted to make a nice sounding album, that would have to wait like now that moment in time was about a, a brace of music raw emotion and it was our job to capture that and then enhance kitty's lyrics and intensity and state of mind as best we could and bloodsuckers is a true moment in time of course you can feel your voice very specific uh it reminds me old stuff in the 90s uh, I don't know if you were born but uh, like uh, <laughs> L7 uh, I love uh, also a, a band called My Ruin My Ruin yeah Terry B yeah Terry B yeah. from uh, Los Angeles I yeah. think uh, very strong personality behind the mic mm -hmm. and uh, all the you know the yeah quite dirt sound too you know uh, for L7 or uh, Like it's all about, for those for like Band L7 as well, it's all about putting across the emotion. And often the best way to do that is to have it sounding raw and untouched and unfiltered. I think loads of music in like 2023 is so beautifully made and put together, but so polished and perfect. And I kind of am really not that interested in that at the moment. Um, for this record, I really just wanted unfiltered. This is who I am. This is my voice. Mistakes and all, you know, quite imperfect. Um, and I think it, that gives it like an urgency. And by the way, you there. Are, I feel uh, on the album a lot of effects on your voice. Mm -hmm. Did you try a lot of things in studio to? Yeah, you know, to diversify your voice. Uh, not, not really. Yeah, I mean, from a production point of view, without getting too technical, it's pretty much just all distortion, like yeah. the same as you do with a guitar. And I think that um, it felt natural for Kitty to, when she was singing, she was like, I just want it to feel kind of like the same as I do when I'm playing my guitar. And that physical, the harder I hit, more it becomes and the same with her voice the louder I go the more intense I become we kind of like create a sound for me to actually sing to rather than just singing with like which would be a lot easier actually but with just like you know bare vocals and then editing afterwards we make the sound roughly so I can actually hear what I'm singing and react to it mm -hmm. yeah so it's mostly just distortion I you know it's a very uh Even 60s records, like Motown records, had distortion on it. It's just a different, it's just a way of doing it. Like, the trend right now for vocals in the mainstream is for everything to be super clean, everything to be tuned by a computer. As soon as you don't hear that and you hear some natural distortion and some natural human tuning, it sounds weird now, but it's actually much more human. Yeah. Who did produce the album? We, we did. did. Okay. Yeah, we had one exception to that, which was we did the very first song that we recorded was a song called Follow You, which 
just halfway through the album and uh, because we were coming from such an emotional time because of Kitty's mum dying and we were we were in a we really knew we wanted to make an album that um, was a statement about who we were as a band and we wanted to use it as a way for Kitty and us to um, remove the negative emotions that we were feeling at the time we were finding it very hard to start the recording process because it just seemed like such a huge mountain to climb and so we we had a very short list of people we'd like to work with uh, maybe only like two or three people and Sean Bevan who had worked with Nine Inch Nails on the Broken EP and the Downward Spiral amongst other things was on that list and we spoke to him about working on the first song that we recorded just to help us develop the process. And he did that with Follow You. And we, the, the, the version that we sent him to mix and produce was actually pretty much unchanged. He, he, he just said, I love what you're doing. Just go for it. Like, don't be confident. Don't, yeah, total confidence boost. He said, don't worry about making this sound nice. You've got something to say it's important don't try and sanitize it be raw be dirty be unpleasant go for it and that confidence he gave us really allowed us to do the rest of the record and we produced something else it seems it's not your first time in studio right oh we've produced everything yeah mm -hmm. it's what we do because we have such a specific vision um, but i think more than that is the fact that the you know we make music to it's to express something that's inside and try to express it in a way that, that makes it more understandable to other people and so like the more people involved the more diluted that expression is it ceases to be as personal the more people involved so we've always tried to do everything ourselves to make sure it's pure um, yeah yeah. Um, so the lyrics are, yeah, quite angry. Um, is it about all about death and negative emotions? Yeah. It, so it's like the anger comes from like grief. It comes from anger at like the world. I don't think you can really exist in like Western society and not feel angry at like everything that's going on. Um, but, but I think something that I hope really comes through in the record is there's a real like joyousness and it's a joyousness from like letting go and, like letting your emotions soar and you know singing with me like and feeling with me and I, I really because that's how I feel about angry music it's like there is a real sense of like when you're in a crowd watching a band and it's heavy and it's angry and you're all singing together in the mosh pit, raging together. That's the happiest I ever am, ever, euphoric. And I think, like, so I don't think the two things are diametrically opposed. I think, like, for me, like, the angrier it is, also the more joyous something is. So I hope that's kind of comes through. Yeah. The anger, so to be able to feel that angry is then the joy of having got that anger out and released it, you know? Yeah. Am I, am I wrong if I say that I can feel here and here some slip nut influences? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yeah, you so. know, the first the first two Slipknot albums are very influential to, I think, most kind of modern rock and metal. Um, I think Ross Robinson's production in that era, he, he maybe is more influential than the individual bands. He decided to remove the um, sterilized, uh, expensive sound and just make it the band playing and the vocalist in particular, just think about what is this song really about and just deliver it unfiltered in the most um, cathartic way they can. And the band to understand what the song is about and play it with the same thoughts in their head the singer is singing which it sounds stupid but it's incredibly rare you know that most most guitarists or drummers don't know what the song is about when they record it the singer just turns up with the lyrics and sings over a nice piece of music or an interesting piece of music to have a drummer playing knowing this song is about this specific thing and this is what i want you to understand 
it allows them to play it exactly like when they're listening to one of their favorite songs and that extra 10 percent of power it makes a difference for sure yeah it's from them from the guitarist from the bass player from every person it adds up to create an absolute avalanche of sound yeah. so little details give the perfection actually in music. absolutely and absolutely i can remember when you said that uh, the core the video yeah when uh, jonathan cries in studio yeah and i in, uh, i interviewed uh, ross robinson in the oh really yeah early yeah two thousands yeah and it was super funny to see a like a classical guy very shy yeah and so put some yeah you know brutal music brutal and so true music i would say yeah but well, that 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 first corn album that last song daddy is for me when the first time i heard that i'd never heard anything like it it was so raw and emotional um and i always wanted to be in a band that was willing to explore that depth of emotion and it was a real privilege to work with kitty who was willing to go there because most band members when something bad happens in their life they're like okay the music can stop until i'm happy again and then we'll make music to actually go this is the worst time in my life let's make music and i want to explore it is a really hard thing to do it's not pretty it's not fun it's ugly hard brutal and watching kitty go through it when she was singing was really hard to watch and we felt guilty sometimes that is this the right thing to be doing to for her to be feeling these negative emotions so strongly but we trusted that when he... i just felt like what i needed to do it helped me massively um, and i wasn't sure if it would help i didn't i did worry like actually like is this going to make me feel worse because i'm opening myself up to these feelings um, and, and just it's so raw is this actually going to be really bad for my brain but It, it was the perfect thing really to be able to do um, I think I think it's like when you experience grief I think it's just like so important to open yourself up to it and not not bat it away because I think like it's not going anywhere and the sooner that you can start to process it the, the smoother your ride like becomes so I think opening yourself up to the emotion is always a good thing okay now that you know Paris You want, of course, to move from UK and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, we're renting a flat around the corner already. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, of course, we, we want to see live the band live now. Yeah, February, March next year. Uh, we had a UK tour booked, but um, we've got some dates coming up with a band called Skin Dreads that has meant from UK it's, too? It's, it's kind of a blessing in disguise like we're doing the UK shows with skin dreads and it means that we're moving our headline tour to February March and rather than it just being the UK we can now extend it into Europe which is much it's much more what we wanted to do um, and Paris obviously will be included in that so would you headline or I think so yeah I think so I think that's the plan yeah yeah we'll be playing almost entirely uh, blood suckers material I saw Skin Red uh, last year with Volbeat. Okay, yeah. yeah. And of course, the, the guys, you know, they know how to do it live, you know? Yeah. They're very They're professional. Funny, yeah. Yeah, and at the same funny. time, very professional. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the music is uh, really incredible, you know? Yeah. It's a masterclass, actually. And you, show. you were talking about UK food, you know? Yeah. yeah. The mixing culture, this is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Like, like, you know, Benji is kind of testament to the fact that he's Welsh, but he's got Jamaican background. He brings that to the music, and then they've got the rest of the band from the other corners of the UK. You know, it's great. Like, metal done differently was, was not to love. You kind of rock? Maybe more rock than metal, right? Um, I think they approach their shows like a metal band because it's all about maybe a new metal band you know they, they want the crowd to jump and bounce are you talking about your hair sorry are you talking about your hair <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a uh, new metal right oh, what, us yeah I mean, sorry i'm talking about skin dread um i know us more rock than metal i don't know like what i those 
we don't like we don't think about that stuff at all in any genre. There's so many rules surrounding what makes a metal band or rock band or what you can do in metal or blah blah blah. Like it's just like very rules are boring, right? Like, I'm sure we can agree on that. Fuck the rules. Yeah. yeah. Fuck the rules. Yeah. Fuck the rules. Um, and like for us, all we're trying to do is like convey emotion, and and whatever genre it is, it's a vehicle to convey that emotion the best way. So it might be a metal riff, it might be like a hip hop drum beat, it might be like a kind of like real like rock power chord. You know, whatever best conveys emotion, like that's what we do at the moment. So, like, we are pretty genreless. Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not tied into anything. The next album could be, you know, fuck knows what, but something completely different. We're not, you know, there's no flag in the sand saying we are this. Ballads or huh? Ballads, possibly. Who knows? Like, genuinely, it could be. Like, <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it could be. I find, <laughs> I find it strange that bands want to be just one genre. They're just can be stuck in something. Um, I think most music fans growing up have quite a wide taste in music and it seems odd to me that if you like 10 different albums that are really influential on you when you're playing guitar and you're a kid growing up, of course you're going to take ideas from all of them. It seems weird to go, no, I have to pick just one and then I have to do that forever for the rest (laughs) of my life, playing the same riff in a different order Fuck, no, I'm not interested. Now, for us, like, I can hear, uh, you know, a, a song by Slipknot or a song by Nanch Nails or a song by U2 or a song by Sam Smith and hear things in all of these that to me inspire and feel exciting and kind of sound the same to me. You know, I hear the same excitement. Like, uh, I've never been a Rihanna fan, but Katie's a Rihanna fan and introduced me to some songs that. I was like, okay, this kind of sounds like The Kills. This is great. I love this. You know, there's there's great music to be found in different places. And I think there's a lot more that we have in common than we do differences. And it's only really just for categorization in record stores or on Spotify and magazines that people want to draw these lines. In reality, people are much more open-minded, I think. This is the tragedy of an artist, you know? Yeah. Be like in jail. Yeah. I can remember the, the movie about Elvis. Yeah. Did you see the movie Elvis? Never seen it. And so I didn't know about his manager. He, he, Elvis wanted to tour in, in Europe. Yeah. But the tour manager preferred him to tour just in Las Vegas, you know? Yeah. So the same show every night at the same place, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's why maybe I think he's dead, you know? Yeah. yeah. Because it's. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a fucking jail, you know. Yeah, it's and prison. Yeah, like every band that they use, they 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 are obliged to yeah. play this song or this song. Yeah. It's a fucking tragedy, you know. Well, that's why I admire bands so much like Metallica because um, at every stage they've refused to be the band that people expected them to be. No one thought that they would make the Black Album. No, no one thought that after the Black Album they would make Load. And no one thought after that that they would make St. Anger. Like, they've every time, even Add Justice For All, like, that album just sounds weird, but it's become the blueprint for, like, every modern metal band. And I think they, they've refused to be put into a prison. Uh, and that's whilst keeping the essential spirit of Metallica alive and that's what we admire and that's what we want to be the essential spirit of St. Agnes will continue how that actually sounds who knows we'll see when we make the next record see you next year guys oh yeah definitely yeah Yeah. see you next year yeah so much (laughs) will be sick of us (laughs) 